Today we're going to look at the book of Nahum. Nahum, we have one day to look at these three chapters of, of the book. And the theme of this book, I would say, is don't rest on your laurels. As you look at this book, you find the city of Nineveh about 120 years after Jonah went to Nineveh. And remember, God spared the city. And now 120 years later, God says, I'm going to destroy you. And look at why. The Lord, verse 2, is a jealous and avenging God. God's jealous because he deserves all of your love. They had an amazing revival, and now two generations have come and gone, or three, and they have forgotten God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. Don't be on that wrathful side of him. Don't be on the avenging side of him. Verse 3, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power. His way is in the whirlwind, that's a tornado, and in the storm, a hurricane, and in the clouds of the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up rivers. I mean, you're talking about the livelihood of a nation. Bashan and Carmel wither. These are great mountains. The bloom of Lebanon withers. The mountains quake before him. I'm talking about earthquakes. Who can stand before his indignation? No one. Pride is stupid. No one can stand before God. Verse 7, the Lord is good. Thank you, God, that you're good. If you weren't good, we'd be all lost. A stronghold in the day of trouble. I need this place. I need this stronghold in God. He knows those who take refuge in him. Does he know you? Do you take refuge in him? That's the only place to take refuge. Tom Brady is probably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And he practiced a lot in college and practiced a lot his first 10 years. But do you know what? He's still as out there and he's the first one on the field, last one to leave, and practices an inordinate amount of time. Why? Why does he need to do that? Can't he just be like, well, I'm the greatest quarterback, you know, ever. You know, I'm at the top of my game. I'm just going to go take it easy. No. Instead, he practices and practices and practices. Anyone in life that's going to be great at something does that. And yet we as Christians do the opposite. We think the opposite. The longer we're saved, the longer we know Christ, the more we say, I don't really need to repent. I did that back in 1960, 80, 90, whatever it was. I repented. I don't need to do that. And the problem is you have a heart that leaves God temporarily, for this and for that. It's a constant need for repentance that we have to have in our life. And this book of Nahum here, th this can become your life story. A story of amazing grace and, and God relenting of disaster he was going to put on your life. And then for whatever reason, you get resting on your laurels. You're like, eh, God's... Uh, been my refuge a long time, but now I can kind of just play it fast and loose. I can kind of do some things. I can take some liberties. I implore you, don't ever think that. You cannot take liberties with your morality, with the Word of God. Be careful about that because that's the book of Nahum. Nineveh does get destroyed. Nineveh is still over there in the Middle East. The ruins are over there, and the ruins are from when it was destroyed. And our lives can be like that if we don't take every precaution to humble ourselves before this great God of the whirlwind and the storm. And so today, take some time, do an inventory, a search of your life, and say, Lord, how are we doing? Is there anything you need to change in my life? Do I need to humble myself for you? Because if you do... Let today be that day that uh, Jonah happens and not Nahum. <laughs>